Now the best place for this experiment is down by the pond. Okie doke. Watch her step. <laughs> it's not that easy keeping up with her. Especially on a beautiful spring day. Rachel Brower is supposed to be showing me her invention. The one with the capacity to greatly improve drinking water in the third world. I think there's one. Over there. Out there, yeah. That is until a frog's egg sac catches her eye. Oh, look, you can see some all the way out there. Oh, yes. And indeed, you can. This is all green in a couple of weeks. Well, you can forgive her if she's a little obsessed with water and the things that grow in it. So I guess you want it somewhere where it's going to be clear? Yeah. For the past three years, it's consumed her life and led to an invention now applauded around the world. It all started when she went hiking with her parents and her brother Mitchell in New Hampshire. We saw the lakes and the rivers, but then we saw the contaminated do not drink signs. And at the same time, I was reading the I'm Malala book. And in that book, many women and girls are dying from the cholera outbreak. The floods continued for years, leading to a deadly cholera scare that was endangering thousands. I was just so surprised. When I was that age, I didn't even know that was out there. So it was really shocking and I really was surprised and that's why I think I wanted to make a difference. So you attach your filter to this part of the system that connects um, the filter to the two right. liter bottles. She started working on something simple. So what's in there? Um, cotton and charcoal. Using basic materials easily available in developing countries. So you take your two liter bottles. Right. Mm -hmm. And why did you choose two liter bottles? Because they're uh, ready, readily available and accessible in third world countries. Right, so like most of this stuff would be, I guess. Yeah. A system for pumping, filtering, and eventually pasteurizing the water, killing deadly pathogens like cholera and E. coli. Okay, well that one's pretty full. Yeah. We'll, we'll take that one off. Okay. Through thousands of hours of research, Rachel knew the water had to be heated to 60 degrees Celsius to kill the bacteria. The water will become clear through the uh, pasteurization. And that placing the bottles on corrugated tin roofs, common in developing countries on a hot day, would accomplish that. So this is what makes it unique. But there's something else, a reliable way to know the water has reached the required temperature. When the water reaches 40 degrees Celsius, this changes color from dark blue to light pink, indicating that the water's heating up. Right. Then when the water reaches 60 degrees Celsius, this wax melts and runs into the second vial, indicating that the water's safe to drink. Have you always been trying to figure stuff out? Well, from I think day one, I've loved doing crafts and putting things together. So I think that kind of is what yeah. really allowed me to do this. And you, you, must, you must have a brain for science. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite thing in school, for sure. Okay. That was my worst. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. Anyway, I found a job. I'm okay. <laughs> and she's been racking up awards for her work. Lots of them. This is the big one, a gold medal from the Canada-wide Science Fair. <laughs> In grade nine here at Bedford Academy. So this is actually one of the questions from your exam. Okay, so we'll go over it now. Rachel says she just tries to fit in like everyone else, but. Hello. Hi. You're pretty, a uh, pretty big deal around here. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Oh no, how many other students get their own billboard? And while her work has already been verified in lab conditions, this summer, science teacher Aaron Adams will take her system with him to Africa for field testing. I've already gotten correspondence from the village I'm going to. They're excited to hear about her project, and they were really excited to hear that it was a young girl that came up with it, because that's kind of neat to them, because they don't have that role model yet. But there's more. A phone call from Princess Zebo Jelani inviting her to travel to Pakistan 
and the admiration of one of her heroes, an email from Malala. Thank you for your great work and ambition and determination. Nothing can stop you. Believe in yourself and keep on moving. Best wishes, Malala. Wow. All that from the mind of this young lady. By the way, in case you think this occupies all her time, Rachel also plays on the basketball team, the soccer team, with the school band, has her own natural line of skincare products, and oh yes, continues to modify her water purification system. If you want to cover them with chocolate, I can take them out. But she still finds time to make chocolate-coated peanut butter balls with Mom Pam. You must be racking up the kilometers on, <laughs> on your vehicle because she never stops. She has a lot of great people in her life that are really supportive. Yeah, yeah, pretty proud mom. Pretty proud mom, yeah. <laughs> As it should be. <laughs> really, there's just one question left. Well, let me ask you this. Don't you ever goof off? <laughs> well, um, I do have some time to do that, I guess. <laughs> okay, I think that's what we should do. Nope. Not bad. <laughs> Whoa, look at that one. Can't nope. be a brainiac all the time. Now let me tell you about the tides. Okay. <laughs> then again, go. Red shirt. Oh, geez, that's pretty good. Ah! <laughs> CBC News, Hubbard's Beach, Nova Scotia.